In this video, we're gonna explore how Greenland makes its electricity, how much we pay for electricity, and explore how badly we were hit after fuel prices went through the roof. But wait, there's more. We're also gonna get a sneak peek into Greenland's now largest solar system installation, which I happen to be a part of. And at this very moment, hopefully, depending on the weather, produces electricity up in as yet. To make electricity production even worse in Greenland, Greenland is not anywhere near interconnected. So we have 17 towns and roughly, what does the internet say? 53 settlement. So making electricity is a giant task in order to get electricity in the towns or settlements because every town and settlement has to have its own power supply in each town or settlement. What's up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alex. I make Greenland known on the internet and once in a while I also happen to talk about real estate. So if you're interested, give me a follow. And if you enjoy this new video, don't forget to hit the like button either. And let's dive in. Electricity is supplied by Greenland's national power supplier called Nukishofit, where we happen to get electricity from hydropower, diesel generators, and a little mix of wind and solar, which is getting ramped up at the moment, and a few other renewable energy sources. No nuclear power yet, which is, in my opinion, is a big mistake, but I'm not gonna focus on that in this video. Maybe for another one. But the majority of the electricity is produced by hydropower. Actually, about 80% of the electricity Nugisio feeds cells to the power grid is hydropower. Yet, if we look at the total energy consumption where we include transport and you know airplanes and boating and fuel and heating and all that the renewable power only consists of about 18 percent so we are still not very renewably friendly in greenland we emit a lot per capita just to get that out of the way set in another way we are still extremely reliable upon Fossil fuels. We do have five hydropower stations, one in Nuuk, Dasilag, Nasak, Ngaroto, Sisimiut, and Iluliset. And I'm gonna throw a little chart up on the screen showing you how the power outputs are from each of those stations. And as you can see, hydropower is fairly new in Greenland. We started the first one in Nuuk in 1993. And it has been producing electricity and some places district heating very reliably since then. The one we have in Nuuk is soon gonna be expanded, so it becomes a 90 to 100 megawatt power plant now, mainly due to the rise in population of Nuuk and also the growing energy demands. And there's also some talk about supplying Asiat and Rasjengoid with hydropower in the future, but that is still heavily reliant on if the hydropower station in Nuuk gets finished, because the one in Asiat and Rasjengoid will not be run profitably. So a little stupid maybe to make that plant if it doesn't produce more money to society. Just my own thought. Besides hydropower, there's also diesel generators in each and every single town or settlement in Greenland, either functioning as like a main power supply or functioning here in Nuuk and the places that do have hydropower as a backup generator, just in case the hydropower plants happen to go into failure or the transmission lines, which did happen last year. Just go ahead and watch this video I have where Nuke basically didn't have any electricity or power for 16 hours during, I believe it was December, due to a massive storm where the transmission lines broke over. And then to make matters worse, the diesel backup generator in Nuke couldn't really get on to supplying the grid with power because the energy demand had increased so much and they hadn't upgraded the diesel generators. So starting the diesel generators up and plugging them onto the electricity grid proved to be a very difficult task, which it shouldn't be. Luckily, all the problems are solved now, maybe. After the hydro and diesel generators, we have some solar power and some wind power. Solar power is currently being built out quite a bit for private people and businesses at the moment. As you can put up a solar system on your roof and in the non-hydropower towns, you can actually get money back if you have any excess electricity that you decide to put out on the grid. This is not the case for the hydropower towns. So in hydropower towns, you have to make 
sure that you're using 100% of the electricity you're producing on your solar system. Amount of installed capacity of wind power is relatively small compared to the solar power we have installed here in Greenland, as it was not until recently that Nukishio Feet put up some wind turbines for testing in Sisimiut, they have two wind turbines being tested up there at the moment. And also my work, which happens to be Dusas, the Greenland's telecom and postal service provider. We also have put up wind turbines on mountaintops supplying our telecom stations. Weather conditions are really unforgiving in Greenland, so the wind turbines has to be extremely robust, but us in Dusas have had quite a bit of success the last couple of years with the wind turbines we have put up, as no wind turbines had been blown to shreds yet. Which brings us to the latest installation, Greenland's <laughs> largest solar system installation. Talking about solar power, the company I work for, Dusas, we recently put up Greenland's largest solar system in Asiat, designed to provide electricity for some of our buildings in Asiat and leading any excess electricity onto the local grid. I'm extremely proud of being part of that project and it did create some news headlines, but unfortunately not any critical comments. As you know, you're doing something right once you get your first haters. But there were none. I guess the project was just a really good one. We did install 101 kilowatts of power, making us one kilowatt larger than the previously largest solar systems placed in Kodasuachet and Igaligu. Igaligu is where Jamie Lannister from, you know, Game of Thrones, the series, I guess he's also known as Nikolai Costa Valdau has a summer vacation house. Just fun fact, you should know that. As Asiad is not a hydropower town, we do get money putting the excess electricity we're not using ourselves produced by the solar power system. We get about 0.74 Danish crowns per kilowatt hour. And for context, electricity in Greenland costs 1.65 Danish crowns per kilowatt hour, which very smoothly makes us transition into Greenland's reaction to the increase in fuel prices. And guess what? We didn't have any. What? No, we didn't have any increases in electricity or fuel prices. Even though we have kind of a crisis out in the moment, especially in regards to fuel. So we haven't been hit as hard with higher electricity prices or fuel prices here in Greenland, as most of our electricity also is produced by hydropower, making the electricity price fairly stable. We also don't happen to be interconnected with any other country, basically eliminating the possibility of trading with electricity. Greenland also has a fixed electricity price all over Greenland, at the 165 Danish crowns per kilowatt hour, even though the production of electricity per capita using diesel highly likely is more expensive than supplying electricity to the citizens of Nuke using hydropower. Being a boat owner, fortunately, we also haven't been hit at all with higher fuel prices. As you know, boats tend to consume quite a bit of fuel, so having to pay more per liter or per gallon doesn't really sound that enticing. But fuel in Greenland still costs 4.4 Danish crowns per liter, also known as 2.23 US dollars per gallon. This is because Greenland has negotiated a low fixed fuel price until 2023, while also not imposing a whole lot of taxes on the fuels we have up here because our economy is extremely reliant upon the fishermen, which brings in lots of exporting money to Greenland. And they so happen to depend a lot on the fuel prices. But my personal assumption is that in 2023, Greenland will definitely, most definitely be hit with higher fuel prices, which inevitably will translate into higher electricity prices as well. So until then, I will enjoy my extremely fuel inefficient boat. Probably gonna buy a very energy consuming light therapy lamp next week and start speculating when the tsunami of higher prices is gonna hit, how bad it's gonna be. Until next time, thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe. I'm out. 
Cheers.